Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So anyways, uh, we'll get started. Um, I just wanted to make a few announcements regarding our Tuesday Mastermind, and I'm going to repeat it again for those that will join us later on. Um, so most of you probably by now have received an email from Remax regarding Bull Trail and the KV Core platform changing a little bit. And we wanted to do a training because um, some of us are not utilizing KV Core and it will actually probably answer a lot of your questions, especially with marketing. Uh, I've met with most of my agents by now and I know our leadership did too. And majority of the agents uh, said that they want to do better with marketing in 2025. So we thought you guys can start 2025 with being trained on KV Core. So starting next Tuesday, for uh, we're doing a six-week session and it's going to repeat. They're all going to be recorded. So if you do miss it, it'll be on our hub. But I highly recommend that you guys, uh, the, way, the best way to do this training is if you go on zoom with your phone or an ipad and then actually have your laptop i know a lot of the uh, leadership are going to message their agents you guys can go to the office and just make it interactive or you know stay after the uh, zoom so that way you can do one-on-one -on -one with your managers so they will reach out to you guys uh, it's we're going to send out the email on monday with the agenda what to expect in the next six weeks the training is not going to be done by me. It's actually going to be done by Tyler. He's our general manager in Arizona. He is well informed and trained with KV Core and Bull Trail. So you're probably wondering what's going to happen to our Tuesday Mastermind. So for now, we've decided um, that I'm going to be on the Mastermind on Tuesdays, but from 930 to 10. I want you guys to go out and make money. And I know you guys have appointments. <laughs> So um, we've decided that if you need, if you have questions uh, for dot loop, any new changes with forms, you can hop on at 9.30. I'll be here every Tuesday, 9.30, as well as our leadership. And then from 10 to 11, it'll be the KV Core training. And that's going to repeat every six, week, every six weeks. Any questions? So we are going to send out a reminder again with the agenda, but that I'm going to just hold off until Monday. So you guys will receive an agenda, what to expect. If you are not logged in to, if you haven't logged in KV4 in a while, just so you know, your Gmail is not going to get you logged in. You need your remax.net email. You should make, make sure that if you are planning on joining these uh, trainings, make sure you already have your login set you're able to log in. That's all I need you guys to do. Make sure you can get into KV Core. And the way you do that is you can either go through the hub, you can go to Mac Center and then go to apps and then click on KV Core powered by Bolt Trail. That's the platform. So please make sure you can log in. I've helped a few agents. They have to reset their password, but your Mac Center login is gonna be the same as your KV Core login. Okay, so your remax.net email. So make sure you all have access to that. Uh, without further ado, so today's session, what I really wanted to do is I know for the last three months, we have spent a lot of times on dot loop with the new forms. And I think by now we pretty much are all well trained. And I'm very, very proud of all of you guys for putting the time into this trainings and uh, our leadership. We had a meeting not long ago and we all, agreed that you guys are more informed than prop not just other realtors but brokers too so i i applaud to you guys for doing the best and uh, i'm very very proud uh to be part of your journey as well and as well as our leadership so today i'm going to share my screen i got a new laptop so please bear with me now i realize why i had a Microsoft uh, laptop because I got a MacBook and it's not really doesn't work really well with Zoom. But I, I practiced this morning, so I'm going to try to share my screen. 
today, please don't be shy. If you have any specific question, I'm sure the question you have, majority of them have it as well. Ask me. I know uh, there's still some issues with dot loop as far as like the autofill or the signatures. And I am working with leadership to make sure that we address them. I do have a meeting with dot loop today at three. So I will make sure that is addressed. So if you've seen any issues that you would like to bring it up, please do so at this time. All right, so you guys all see my dot loop, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, awesome. So uh, I would like to, um, we can definitely create a loop. Is there anything specific you guys would like me to review? Adona, or... Adona, <clears throat> hi, it's Irene. My yeah. issue with dot loop is I, I think I'm doing it right, correctly, but it's not working. Wow. Trying to get um, an email document into a file. So, uh, you know, where it says clip here and then paste to, to your email. For some reason, it's not working for me. If it's I a Word document, it's not going to transfer it. The document has to be PDF. And it also, if you have an email. But it's an e email, not a, it's not a, it's, I can pick anything up from a browser if it's PDF, but I'm talking specifically, then there's the other one instead of browse, it says um, a, a email where you can go, you know, lift something from an email. So uh, I know about, we'll just go over. I'm not picking a loop just so that I can show you guys what she's talking about. So you're when you're going to add a document, you're going through email, you copy this link and then you forward the email you want to go to your loop. If it's an actual email that you're trying to transfer, it's not going to do it. You have to save the email as a PDF and then attach it. This is only going to pull PDF documents that's on that email. So how do you then save it as a PDF, I guess would be the question. So you're going to, you're going to go and file print. And then instead of actually printing, you're going to change where it says print to save as, and it's going to save it as a PDF. Ooh. Okay. Got it. All right. So that, that will be easy if I can. Uh, That's a great right. tool for a lot of things. That's a great tool. <laughs> yes. That save PDF. Yes. Okay. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So just, yes. Does someone ask a question or should I just, I'm going to mute everyone. And if you guys have questions, please like unmute yourself. Okay. So um, I hope that answered your question. Now, if, if you guys want me to go over anything on dot loop that you have concerns or you would like for me to go over, even if it's the buyer agency agreement or the contract of sale, please let me know. Okay, I, I Donna, it's Irene again. I have a second question. So if I'm, um, okay, I guess it applies to uh, sales and rentals, but for instance, if I'm doing a rental and it's my listing. So first I, um, you know, create the dot loop for the uh, landlord. But then when I get, say I put um, a lease together myself on that property, I ended up creating a second one that says tenant side. Is okay. that right? That's the best way. So you make sure that you have all the documents saved. So the way you should do it is when you're creating, it's gonna, it's gonna show that you have a landlord loop. So for example, let's say one, two, three main continue and then you're picking a landlord loop right so right here gsmls right so that was the listing portion and then if i lease it myself i found that it would be too too many too crazy like you say to get all the documents and then i can't pull it so i ended up creating a separate uh tenant one that's the cleanest way to do it. I would recommend okay. that you create a tenant loop. So that way you make sure that both sides are signing everything that they have to. Okay. I was just thought maybe there was something uh, different. All right. Thanks. Yep. Any other questions for you guys uh, regarding doubt loop? Did you all create your profiles? 
Um, again, I have a meeting today with them because I do realize when you go and create your profiles, I realize not all the forms are custom to pull the information you have here um, on your uh, dot loop. So when you're creating a file, like a contract of sale, it's going to put in the, um, it's not going to pull the brokerage information. So please make sure you guys do that. See here how I have the address. So sometimes when you're preparing the contract of sale, it's not pulling your office address, but hopefully after today it will. So it's going to save you guys a lot of time. So you, you won't have to now go ahead and write your name every single time. But remember you, you must add your contacts to your loops. For example, if I was going to create uh, I'll just put one address, one Washington Avenue test. Continue. I guess we'll just do a buyer loop. Continue. And if I go too fast, please let me know. And then I can go back. All right. So this is your buyer loop. Before you start working or opening any of your files, any of the forms, Scroll at the bottom and then add your people, add your contact. So I'll just put Frank Lakely and then her role. So she will be my buyer. You can add any information. So if you want the address to appear on the contract of sale, I realize now lenders are requesting that the buyer's and seller's current address is on the contract, right? So don't leave it empty. So this is where you can put in their information. So I'll just put her address as one, two, three. Actually, I mean, treat. I'll say that she's in Franklin Lakes. The more information you fill in, the more will come out on your forms when you autofill them. So it's good to do it. Take the time. Fran, what's Franklin Lake zip code? 07417. Okay. <clears throat> and then I have her email. She's my buyer and add a person. All right. So now she's in my contact. So now when I pull in the contracts, see that I miss it. Right there. So you see how autofill comes up. So buyer one, buyer's agent. This is where I'm going to go and fix this because I wanted to auto populate where you don't have to go and click your name, but for now, just go ahead um, listing agent, I'm not going to add a scroll buying broker. I'll just put my name again. This is where you can add as much information as you want. So you can look it up by MLS number, or you can put in the address. So I think I put in one Washington Avenue. Don't you find it valuable, Adona, to always do the con the contract has the most information in it? So yes. So do that form first. All the other forms are really easy to autofill. <clears throat> so I'm going to pick this address since it's already listed. So it'll be easier just so that you guys see import data. So this means it's going to pull information from the MLS. So it's so much easier if you do start, like Fran said, with the contract of sale. So it added all the information that I want. You can even add the lot and block here if you would, if you choose to autofill. So if I scroll down, see I already pulled all that information. The address, Mammoth, then if I go, let me just, this is where um, contract of sale needs a little work, which I will work with dot loop. So right here, you see it doesn't pull the information. So I want to make sure that that's going to be done because 
if I already auto filled the listing and then I already have my information, I want it to auto populate for you guys. So just please give me a day or two. I'm working with them today. So I'll make sure as you guys know, dot loop is going through the same changes as we did. So they manually have to go and format these documents to make sure they auto fill correctly. Mine has been working. That's weird. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's really strange. Okay. So this is where, um, if you guys, you know, I, I wanted to make it easier for you guys. So you don't have to import as many, as much information as, you know, to make this easier for you. And then obviously the exclusive buyer agency agreement. I've had some feedback where, uh, there are some agents that are offering, uh, a rebate to their clients and they're calling it as a kickback. It's a rebate. As you guys know, we do have all of the agreements if you ever chose to, not that we recommend, but if you ever had to uh, give out a portion of your commission that you work really hard for, you can always add a document. And then I realized when I met with that agent that some of you guys didn't even have this folder. So I would like you guys to all pay attention to this portion. I want to make sure that when we end this call today, you all have this folder. So if I was going to go pick a template and if you, this is what's going to come up, scroll at the bottom, you all need to have New Jersey realtor documents as a folder. This is, you guys are a member, so you should all have it. Uh, I realized some of them were not activated, so please check your loop at this time. Make sure you have it. On this folder, any new form, any changes that real estate, a New Jersey realtor changes, they will automatically be imported here. So if you're looking for a buyer agency agreement, non-exclusive agreement, uh, CIS, lead paint, contract of sale, any addendums, right? Uh, so you see, you can see right, I mean, coronavirus doesn't even count, but they still have a solar panel, swimming pool, new constructions. All the addendums will always be on this folder. So it's very important that you guys have this particular folder on your loop. So if you don't, please reach out to me directly and I'll make sure it's activated. You have to be careful if they're offering rebates with what's allowed. Yeah. So, and I yeah. don't have the data on that right this second. Correct. We, yeah, you can't just say, decide what you want to offer to the buyer. So please reach out to your managers before you have that conversation with your clients. Uh, but all the, those forms are on this folder. So just, I want to make sure you guys, um, have it. So as you can see, I typed in buyer. So you have the buyer agency agreement with rebate. This is the exclusive buyer agency agreement that we've been using and it's in our loop. You have the non-exclusive and the non-exclusive with rebate. So these are all your exclusive. You also have the tenant forms. They're all here. Anything that you need uh, will be on this folder, including landlord. So So if you need any documents, it will be here and then seller. So a, a lot of the, you know, the seller disclosure as well, um, it's going to be here. So this is Adrian. I have a question regarding the tracking form. I okay. thought if we fill out the tracking form, it will auto populate any other documents that we need. But today you that too, whatever you prefer, this also has information. However, the contract of sale will probably have the most data, but yes, you you, you can see like this is pretty much pre-filled for you. Um, so if I went to autofill, it I already pulled the listing for me. I just need to make sure that it also pulls the information for our agents. So, if Fran, is this working for you as well? It's working. It's all working, but I add everybody down on the bottom under people from the very beginning. 
you okay. know, I, I, I add everyone, the listing agent, the listing company, all the information, and then everything gets populated. So, so let me try and see. Buyer's agent. So are you saying that if we fill out the contract, it will also populate the office tracking form? For the mo for most of the information, yes. If you add, um, obviously the mortgage company is not going to be on your contract and title company might just be the name of the title company. But for your buyer, seller, listing agent and buyer's agent, yes. Most of it, not all, but most of it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So let me just try see if. All right, so yeah, if I if you add yourself as well as like the buyer's agent at the bottom, then it will auto populate the information. It even um, pulls the closing date from the contract when you enter it. I I mean that's what I found and the and the contract date that you're putting it together. So it's just like the sales price, everything usually falls into place. You just have to take the time to do that part on the bottom and it it's worth it. Cause then you don't have to go back and just double check everything. And another thing we did for you guys, again, this is not a mandatory form, it's optional is the contact sheet. Uh, we realize with multiple offers, it's really helpful if you include this with your offer because it's just you're in, you're being professional. And you're saying, hey, look, this is all the people that will be on this transaction and you can attach it to your offer. It helps, right? Saying, hey, I know everyone on this document. So you see it already picked both. Um, it pulls a lot of the information that you add. The more you add at the contacts at the bottom, the more it will auto populate on auto fill on your forms. So um, this is helpful. Again, it's not mandatory. This is optional if you want to use it. And the other thing that we made a change is our commission. So we realize that some of you are getting paid by both a uh, buyer and seller or just the buyer, not the seller. So instead of having multiple, uh, let me just mute everyone. Give me one second. Please unmute yourself if you need to speak. Sorry, just heard like a lot of background noise. So anyways, uh, we we were, we didn't want to make it confusing, like, oh, which commission statement do we use? So this is uh, our new commission statement. So it just lists who you're getting paid by. If you're getting paid by both, this is where you enter the information. If you're just getting by buyer, fill out the buyer portion. Um, we had like a few title company that, you know, questioned how it was written. So this, I believe, made it, it simplified uh, that issue. Uh, Fran, did you have any other forms that you had mentioned to me that you would like me to review with the team? Um, no, no, the only, yeah, for, for dot loop okay. there is like the, um, okay. give me one second. Let me just meet everyone again. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Please unmute yourself. Um, on the listing file some of the forms are not coming up as required and they are required um for which mls new jersey mls the team is going to be mad at you they're like what you're you're going to make her change this okay you loop okay so uh scroll down 
Um, hold on, hold on. The CIS, it says that's the buyer one. It should be the seller one. And it says optional. It's required. Oh, by the way, in the last CIS, meeting, just so you know, the CIS, this is for the buy and sell. Both. But, okay. But it just says optional. Okay. And according to the latest meeting that we had with New Jersey Realtors at Greater Bergen, we should have on our file, if we're the listing agent, the signature of the seller, and if a contract comes in, we should also have the CIS that has the signature on the buyer, that we are required by law. I was totally, you know, like I always felt we only needed it for the party we were representing, but according to the latest meeting with New Jersey Realtors, we need to have everybody's signature on it. So is this a form like we should be maybe, you know, I'll confirm that again, okay, but maybe that we should be supplying as the listing agent to the buyer's agent or else have their copy of their CIS so you have both in the file, you know, that's what they said. I, we were totally like taken by that. But let's go back and let me just see what else needs to be required. Um, yep. Um, that's the CIS. And, and as you guys see, we made it easier for you guys. The open yeah. house representation notice. Make sure at your open houses, you have to have this displayed, whether it's at the door, whether where they're signing in. We also have a sign-in sheet. You don't have to use this one. However, uh, Fran Blakely is the one who prepared this. You want them to acknowledge that disclosure, that they have read this disclosure. But it's so great, Adona, that you put these in. Everybody's in the listing files because Every, they don't have to go searching for them. You know, it's awesome. And that notice has to be up. Yeah. yeah. So you, you never go back on the yep. top a second? I just want to say, okay, so... Um, okay, so it was just the CIS, it seems... But the admins are also looking for the MLS printout. So I don't know if you want to change that to required. <clears throat> if you can. But the CIS is more important, right? Yes, that is correct. Um, we'll go change. Any questions that you guys have? Any suggestions? We want to make this easier for you guys. Okay. We're just trying to hold you guys uh, make sure that we're here to make sure that you guys are staying within the guidelines because at the end of the day, it's not an issue until it becomes an issue. If real estate commission, we already had four visits this year. Luckily, they did not review any of their files, but I can tell you that they can stop by at any of your open houses and uh, or they can stop by at an office when you're working. Not that we discourage you to come. I, we want you to come to the office, but you want to make sure that you have all these documents. So uh, these forms, 90% of them are from right. you know, the yeah. law. Like we didn't come up with this. We're not trying to make this harder, but it's so much easier when you your files are complete. How, you know, we know we, we want to pay you as soon as possible. So maybe what you guys should do is 10 days prior to your closing, reach out to your admin, just say, hey, or when you, uh, I know, Fran, you made a great suggestion. When you have an offer accepted or a listing, just let your admin review and make sure that you already signed everything. It's easier if you have your client sign when they're signing everything than going back after the fact and telling them, oh, you forgot this form and I forgot this form. My company needs this form. So please reach out to your admins or your manager and we are more than welcome to review your file. Make sure you have everything. There was, um, I also sent you a message, but I think you're going to take care of that separately. On the listing loop for uh, a landlord loop, there was something that was off, but I, I, I don't think that's probably relevant to everybody at this point. So, yes. And you, so and, and you guys, you're watching her. You can't get into this. This is the back end. Of it, so, yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> yes. Um, anyways, yeah, so Adona, just, just to add one thing to what you just mentioned about, um, as soon as you have it's a signed contract and everything, um, to have the admin check, um, all the paperwork to make sure you've got what you need. It's especially important for the other party, the, 
that you check their documents are all signed um, because it's going to be virtually impossible to go back to them after the deal closes and have them make sign something. I, I'm glad you brought that up because even with the seller disclosure, we realize, yeah. and as well as contract of sale, some, some agents are still using the wrong forms. And it's our responsibility as well. Just because someone's giving you the form doesn't mean that you need to accept it and have your client sign. So for example, we realized with the seller disclosure, some companies are still using the old form and now you're having your buyer sign a disclosure that doesn't even have the flood risk, which has been a requirement since March of 2024. Also, before you have your client sign those forms, you have to review it. You have as much responsibility as the other side. So don't have your client sign something that's not filled out right? A seller, if they pick unknown, they chose unknown to every single question, that's fine. But you shouldn't have your client sign something that's not fully complete. You should make sure that you make your client aware of there. If there's any uh, issues, if if you have any concern, if someone check mark, yes, you should bring that up to your client. Don't just download it from the MLS or or take it from your email and send it to your clients to sign. Same thing with the lead paint, we realized some lead paints were not signed by the seller. You represent the buyer. What does that mean? Who filled it out? The seller didn't sign it, but your buyer did. So uh, thank you, Robert, for bringing that up. Fran, I'm sorry. I know you were going to say something and I cut you off. No, I was going to talk about the seller's disclosure. Also, I've seen some come in that don't have the lead paint, uh, have the flood section in them. They're using old paperwork because not everybody is as smart as our agents and they don't have the updated forms. I don't know why, but it's crazy. So I would definitely check that seller's disclosure because to try to go back and have them sign it all over again, uh, after a closing happens or make sure your admin's checking it right away. When you have a deal put together, you check it because that's your diligence is really to make sure you know, that we have the proper paperwork. So we have compliance paperwork for the company and compliance paperwork for the state. Both are equally important. The compliance paperwork for the company deals with everything to do with e &O. Everything we have you fill out has to do with e &O. So we want to be careful because if something were to happen, we don't want to, we want to be covered by that. And how do you know which form is correct? If they yeah. always have the date at the bottom, so this is the most up to date. Uh, we are tracking, so if we do see there has been an update, we'll notify you via email, and we'll also update it on the loop. So for right now, all of our forms are up to date. We're not using any of the old forms. So, but we do realize. Some of you guys, if you created a personal folder, which is fine, you have to make sure you update your files because let's say you downloaded a contract from 2020 and you add it to your personal folder and you keep using that, that's going to be the wrong contract. So make sure that if you do have personal folders, uh, you uh, download the correct forms. And the only two folders, you guys really need to make sure that you're looking in, if you're looking for a form, if you go to templates will be, uh, I have more, you probably don't even see all these forms that I see, but the, the folders is going to be all Remax Select 2024. So this is where you will find uh, the contract of sales. Um, you'll find all the MLS forms for NJ, GS, All Jersey, Mammoth, Ocean. This is uh, ARW. If you're looking for the brochure like lead paint in Spanish, that's where you'll find the form. And then all the agreements, like the addendums, like I said earlier, will be on the New Jersey Realtor documents. I promise you guys, 99.999 of the forms are in, in either one of these folders. We don't have anything that's missing at this point. I have a question about your um, new commission statement that you spoke about a little while ago. I think I misunderstood uh, as I read it, thinking that you wanted us to specify what the buyer's portion of the commission was and what the seller's portion of the commission was rather than a buyer 
paying the commission. So if we have an, a, um, a transaction where we're representing both the seller and the buyer, but we're being paid by the seller, then only the seller commission line is what is reflected on the commission statement. Is that correct? Correct. Right. So I have to revise something. Okay. Yeah. So I know some companies like the listing side will, will submit a, a commission where it lists both parties. You're only focusing on what you're getting paid and who's ever paying it. So now, as you guys know, uh, you can get paid both by the seller and the buyer in a transaction. So if I represent a buyer and I decide to charge my buyer two and a half percent, the seller's offering two. When I'm submitting this commission, I'm going to write 0.5 percent on the buyer and then I'm going to put two percent from the seller. Um, and then also, let's say the listing, the purchase price was 520 because that's another question. And it says buyer's commission based on. Some attorneys are very particular. So if, let's say during home inspection, the, the buyer got a $10,000 concession and now the uh, the attorneys, they want you to base it on minusing the 10,000. So that means that your commission is gonna be based on the 510. So that's I just, we just had a transaction where we're, um, we need to pay an outgoing referral. And um, the attorney wanted it taken off from the total commission um, at closing, which we've never done before. It's always paid through Remax. Um, we said that, and he agreed to do that. But there's no place on this commission bill that other than mentioning, yes, there's an outgoing referral on a transaction that any specific amount is mentioned on the commission bill for, for the people who are writing checks to understand who gets what, so the except for the referral commission agreement. Yeah, so the referral is between company to company, right? So you, right. the title company is not gonna pay the referral on, on behalf. You have to collect what's owed to you. On right. your tracking form, you do have where uh, you you do submit where you have a referral. So right here, uh, outside referral. Right. Yes. And then, and then you have should to you attach, note it. Then then you can attach your referral form to your admin, and we'll know that we need to pay out a referral. Right, and and it's clear if it says a certain percentage of the buyer's agent portion, and then they look at the contract to see what that in, indeed was. Perfect. So the admin are trained to reflect, uh, let's say you were the listing or the buyer. Uh, it's the listing and the buyer, but, but the buyer was referred. Okay. So then you attach a referral saying that it's 25% out of like your two and a half percent. So right. you attach form and then we submit this to accounting and accounting is the one who will write the check out to that referral referring agent right and if and if the referral just read read buyer's agent uh portion of the commission should i be more specific under notes or something so that it's very clear uh, exactly okay. what the referral is yeah so yeah. if you are okay. representing if, if you have a, a client that was referred to you, be very specific in, as to like what the referral is. Is it on the buy side, on the listing side, both? So yes, please make sure that you are specific so that way we know to pay it accurately. Adona, I have a question. Thank you. Um, so the way you filled that commission uh, out, you said buyer is paying 5%, seller 2%. Yeah, 0.5%. Oh, 0.5. I missed that part because I'm thinking yeah. it's a 7% commission. Perhaps. No, 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 no. So for yeah. example, let's say I have a buyer exclusive agency agreement with my buyer for two and a half. And I found them a property that the seller was only offering two and the buyer agreed to pay me 0.5. So you're going to put in 0.5 here. Okay. And I missed the point part. <laughs> That's okay. okay. I get it. Okay. Hey, listen, if you can get a 7% commission. No, no, I'm saying, yeah, but 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 they see all this and then at the end they get don't they get mad at you? 
Well, you need to disclose it. So yeah. you need to have a conversation with your buyer. That's why it's important, which I will just go over one more time. So let's, I'm going to go to the buyer loop. What time is it? 1040. Okay, good. We have time. So I'm going to go in my buyer loop, which I created before, right? So this is my exclusive buyer agency agreement. You need to have a conversation with your buyers, what your fee is from the beginning. Don't just make it about the commission. You want to tell them everything that you're going to do for them, that they'll be embarrassed to really tell you that like the answer is no. So let's say you decide that you, Again, it's not price fixed. So whatever you feel comfortable, if you feel like you want to charge 2%, then you charge two. If you feel like you want to go two and a half or three, then that's what you're going to um, write on this contract. So let's say I, I tell my buyer, hey, for me to represent you, my commission is two and a half. However, there's many ways that you can make it work. Now, if you have a buyer that you know they have the funds, you can tell them, hey, M Mrs. or Mr. Buyer or both, uh, when we find a property, if the seller's offering a commission, it might offset what you owe to me. Or if they just want to offer 2%, then you'll be responsible for the half a percent. And Or we can add it we can add the half a percent to the offer, whatever they feel comfortable. So that way they're not bringing an extra half a percent at closing, they can add it to their purchase. But let's just assume you had a client that um, they can afford to pay you the half a percent. So you have two and a half percent right here on this line. And then I'm gonna save it. So this is your agreement. Now, if you <clears throat> are submitting an offer, under contract of sale, let's see. You have the cooperating broker compensation agreement. This is where you need to have an understanding between, see it's the listing agent, and the buyer's agent. So if you're, if the seller's offering 2%, you're gonna write 2% right here. Sorry, give me one second, 2%. You submit this with your offer. You wanna get the sign. Now, some of you have asked me, well, what happens if I wrote it on the contract of sale, but I didn't include this? Just try to make this into a habit to have the sign, send it along with your contract of sale. For the most part, a lot of you didn't, they, you guys don't have an issue because, or when you have the listing, we realize the buyer's agents are not submitting this form. That's on them. But if, make sure it's on the contract of sale, which I'll show you. So if I open the contract of sale, let's see right here. Hey, Adon, I want to ask, I want to uh, share with you something. Yes. Um, I have um, a listing um, that the home, the landlord agreed to pay the commission for um, the buyer's agent, uh, but minus, for example, 100 or 200. The Wiker's agent says, no, uh -uh, you're not allowed to say minus anymore. Is that correct? No. So some brokerages have decided to uh, not uh take the mls or they've decided to not accept it or or charge so it's it's i can't say that it's correct because every brokerage has their own way what we're doing is if you have a listing that the seller is offering a commission you can still charge an mls uh listing fee so if you have that concern please reach out to me and we'll we'll, we'll get that handled so if your seller is offering a right. commission, they'll charge it. Yeah. So she that agency said, well, Wiker does not allow us to take two hundred dollar or hundred dollar as MLS fee any longer. Well, so I, I would have I would tell them that the listing mm. fee is the same across the board for every agent that is showing your listing, and there's no exceptions. Mm -hmm. And just put that in a text message. That's it. Oh, okay. You can't just Thank let you. it go so easily. That's not right. Yeah. You have to fight for it. No, but it's it no no. It is if it's if it's actually if you cannot, you cannot. But if you can, you can. I just I'm it concerned about been, the legal the, 
So it has not been eliminated yet. yet. So you can still, if yeah. your seller is offering and that's your agreement between you and the seller that you are giving out two or two and a half minus the listing fee, you just need to fight mm -hmm. for it. And if you need help, Karma, please call me. All right. Thanks, Adona. You're welcome. On your contract of sale, guys, this is where you can add what you're getting paid. So let's say the 2% was from the seller and then you're going to write 0.5% from the buyer. So this is your protection as well. <clears throat> Or, you know, some of you, if you're adding to the offer, and even if they're offering out two, remember, it's not price fixed. Just because if someone is offering only 1%, but you want to get paid two and a half, and you're submitting a great offer, you can still request that they pay you two, two and a half. Now, you just need to make sure you have a, a very clear conversation with your buyer that, hey, if there's multiple offers on that property and we're requesting two or two and a half and then you have an agent saying, I'm getting paid by my client directly, you have a, a, a high risk of not getting this offer accepted. So just make sure you're very clear with your clients. And um, for the most part, I feel like it's almost as business as usual. Uh, but of course, you will have some some transactions that are more challenging. Hey, don't have a question on that, on the listing fees. We're still allowed <clears throat> to call up the listing agent and see what the offering um, is, right? Is that correct? Yes. Because every time I called, not every time, a few times I called, the answer I got was just write in what you want. Uh -huh. <laughs> they don't have to disclose what the seller is willing to offer. They just have to answer you yes or no. Mm. And some, listen, the whole litigation was all about, you know, the ability for the seller to negotiate. So maybe they don't want to offer you more than you would really ask for. So I've been in that situation where they say, just bring in your offer with your compensation on it. Mm. But mm -hmm. make sure you do that um, cooperating broker's agreement with that. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So yeah, make sure please you submit this with your offer, especially if you're requesting a certain amount, um, you know, and you want to make sure that they all agree. So any other questions, guys, it doesn't mean just remember on Tuesdays, if you joined us later in the beginning, I mentioned my Tuesday mastermind is going to change. Um, from Tuesdays from it's still going to be on Tuesday but it's going to be 9 30 to 10 and then we'll, we're going to have Tyler from Arizona uh who's going to do a KB core training starting next Tuesday from 10 to 11 make sure you have your login for your um KB core so please make sure you set that up it's going to be very very important that you guys all join because it's going to be a lot of information especially for marketing if you want to start sending out those newsletters, you want to add your potential listings on a, a Droop campaign where they receive marketing updates, especially on their property. There's so many other tools that you can use like KB Core land, landing pages, setting up your core listing with your social media so it automatically advertises without you having to do anything really, just setting it up. So please make sure that you make the time and I appreciate it all for being here. And of course, if I ever need to do a mastermind, which will take more than 30 minutes, I will go ahead and change it from nine to 10. But for now, I feel like for the most part, we have uh, done all the trainings on dot loop and I want to start doing more of like market updates and just show you where the market is trending. Uh, if there's any new forms that needs to be, um, you know, we need to discuss or go over it. I'll make sure that we use that, utilize that time. Also, if you have specific questions on KB Core, you can use that time as well. But please do everything you can. It's six weeks and you want to make sure that you're starting your 2025 correctly with all the marketing tools that's available to you, especially creating CMAs. I know uh, one of my agents that's on this call, I'm going to call her after it's actually very easy with the, the CMA. Um, when you plug in the uh, address, you can pull out, like it pulls listings as well around the area. So if you don't know how to do that, this is what we're going to go over on the KB Core training starting Tuesday. 
Yeah, can I just add, I, I think it's a great idea that you guys are doing that because I, there's so many people in our organization that don't use it and it's it's such a waste that because it's it's a phenomenal tool and it automates a lot of our marketing with our buyers and sellers and, and it's an incredible tool. I use it all the time. And when I hear that people don't use it, I, I just can't believe it. <laughs> Yeah, so it does a lot for you. Was someone saying something? I'm sorry, I interrupted. Um, yeah, so every Tuesday, 10 to 11, it, they will be recorded, but it's different when you're going and watching something that's been recorded than actually being live um, because you'll be able to ask questions. I already told him. I know the beginning will be creating your profile. It's important that you update your profile too. Maybe you did this. I've seen some profiles that they were done from like five, 10 years ago, and then they just copy and paste it. You want to change it. Your, your KB core profile should be very different from your Zillow, realtor.com, homes.com. All your profiles should not all be the exact same. So uh, just be ready to change that. Uh, I'm so excited for 2025. It's going to be phenomenal. And I, I feel like we just want to prepare all of you guys with marketing because Remax has so many more tools. They've invested a lot of money in making these changes for us. We're just not using them. So the training is really designed for you guys. Uh, and um, please join and I'll be on it as well. So, and as well as our leadership. So it's going to be very exciting. And thank you for all being for being here. I hope I get to see you guys at the holiday party next wednesday uh i have um some surprises some giveaways so i hope you guys did uh register to attend if you did not register but now wish to come you really have to let me know in the next like 20 minutes okay so uh, i already gave my final number but if i have to add more people i will so uh i hope you guys do join us it's gonna be a lot of fun we're excited and then triple play is the week after. So I hope I get to see you guys there. If you are attending, please reach out to your manager, let them know, or reach out to me. I'm just trying to keep a list together. So that way you guys know what we're doing day to day. Um, and if you don't have any questions, I wish you guys a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys all enjoy with your family and friends and be safe, eat lots of turkey. Mm -hmm. And uh, I might, um have the admins leave a little early on wednesday as well but of course you guys can you utilize the office at any time the office will always be open and happy have a thanksgiving happy thanksgiving enjoy take care everyone bye